All right, all right. How's it going, everybody? Once again, this is Jose Trujillo. Bam! There we go. There it is. Uh, I'm going to make an awesome painting right now with a uh, palette knife and brush and all kinds of good stuff. Even my hands, I gotta put my all my fingers in there. Ah. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me today for another one of my super awesome. Uh, Demos, tutorials, uh, watch me paint. Hey, look, Ma, I'm on TV. Moments. <laughs> um, here we go. Let's see here. Let me get my stuff. All right. Now, this is, uh, this is the way I do it. So don't be haters, please. Those of you who want to be haters. Uh, this is not the end all be all. Nothing is the end all be all. This is just the way I do it. And maybe you guys, I don't know, maybe you guys can learn a thing or two or those of you who are not into, oh, before I go into my, my, my rant, because <laughs> that sounds like a rant already. Um, I'm going to do a, a beach scene, landscape uh, painting. This is perfect for, for, um, this size, I mean, it's perfect for carrying plein air, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're ever getting to doing plein air painting or stuff like that. This is one of those, um, one of those sizes that just, you know, it's inviting for that kind of stuff. So, you know, I used to do a lot of plein air. Um, I still do, but I don't do as much. And when I mean a lot, I mean a lot. I used to spend hours, not on one painting, but I used to put my easel, uh, my easels. Some people are afraid of saying stuff like that. Or, oh, Monet used to do that. You know, Monet, Monet, Monet was one of those artists who put multiple easels. A lot of people don't know that. Monet used to do that. And that's not just to be prolific, but it keeps you, it keeps you moving. And it gets you out of being pigeonholed, you know. And I know some artists that like, you know, anathema, you can't say that, horrible, oh, no, you know, I don't know. For me, it's, you know, whatever gets the job done. I've, I've had my share of naysayers, people that are like, no, man, you don't do it like this, you do it like that. And almost everybody wants to claim to, to have the answer, you know. But the, the way you do this thing is the way you do it. That's the way to do it, the way you do it. And you learn stuff here and you pick up stuff there along the way and you drop some stuff and then you pick it up again and you remold it and it's not wishy-washy it's expensive it is expensive so when something when you're when you're creating artwork and you're you're learning you're doing a few things you expand and then you contract and then you expand again and you could sort of a breathing exercise i i recently was listening to a uh, an interview by Jeff Koons. I know a lot of people are like, yeah, Jeff Koons will sell it, blah, blah. No, oh, no, no, no. The guy's an artist. You know, whether you like it or not, the guy's an artist. He wouldn't be, he wouldn't be there. You know, he wouldn't be there. And I'm not talking about fame. I'm talking about creating artwork. Because you have to be a hell of a person to be like, I'm going to live off of this. I'm going to make art. It's not easy. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a challenge. Like anything else, right? Like anything else, but but a bit more in the sense that it's not, you know, your, your parents are not like, I hope you become an artist when you grow up. Parents go, you know, become a doctor. Do something that's not like stupid, like art, for the most part. Unless you have like one of those hippie parents that, you know, that are like, be zen, create artwork, everything's cool, we'll find a way, you know, we'll kind of, most of us don't, don't have those, didn't have that upbringing. Some did, but most of us didn't. So most of us are like, I want to be an artist. And then your parents looked at you like, why? Why? I thought you were going to be a doctor. You know, I hoped you were going to be a doctor. Something else, I don't know. Some uh, awesome career like that, too. Usually when, when I used to tell people, that I, that I was an artist or I was going to be a, a, a paid artist, you know, commercial artist. Or people hate that word, commercial artist. Well, what kind of artist do you want to be? The one that doesn't get paid? 
<laughs> uh, anyways, uh, people would always kind of give me that look like, really? Why, why, why would you do that to yourself and your family? <laughs> like it's this horrible sin, right? It's like, I don't know, Steven, Steven Spielberg wanted to be into movies. I want to I do artwork. How come it's okay for him? You know why it's okay? Because he made shit of money. <laughs> Some people are like, oh yeah, well, if you're gonna be like Steven Spielberg, it's okay. <laughs> Anyways, enough of that rant. But, see, there we go. There we go. Uh, I lost my, my train of thought, and it's not the caffeine, it's just that I was thinking about, about um, all these little things that stop us from, from achieving um, our best selves, our potential. And it's not just people. We, we tend to think it's people. You know, we're like, oh, it's someone out there, you know, stopping me. <laughs> the men or galleries don't pay attention to me, man. You know, uh, have you noticed that people that don't, that are not your friends don't pay attention to you? I don't know if you noticed that. Even, even friends, we have a hard time getting them to pay attention to us. So, anyways, just that little nugget right there. I learned this from a, from a business guy, and not until I started applying it did my approach change. He's like, look, dude, you want to go into, I don't know, exhibiting artwork? He's like, don't go in there and be one of them. And I was like, what, what, what do you mean one of them? He's like, don't, don't go into an art gallery and try to do what everyone who wants what you want does. I'm like, I don't get it. He's like, it's like dating a girl. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but the guy's, the guy's, the guy's very successful. So I imagine he knew what he was talking about. He's like, most guys are like, oh, let's go out on a date and hook up or, you know, whatever. You know, get you dinner. And most girls know already what that means, right? Man? He's like, he's like, if, if, if you tackle it a different way, you'll get the date. And maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, you'll get a second date. He's like, but if you go at it like an idiot and try to do what everybody else is doing, uh, your chances are very slim, unless that person's looking for someone. In which case, we're always like, yeah, I just went like that, cold turkey, and, you know, and I got it. And usually when that happens, it's because the other person's looking for someone. And it happens like that with sales, too. I remember trying to get a sale of my artwork and with interior designers and all of a sudden these interior designers just called me out of the blue. They're like, oh, I saw your ad. And I, I tried to repeat that another, you know, another hundred times and it didn't work anymore. And I, and I asked her, like, Why, why'd you call me? And she was like, oh, we're desperately looking for someone because <laughs> the, the other artist, I guess, they blew the job, blew up the job or whatever. They, they, they didn't uh, perform, right? They didn't hold their end of the bargain, so we're desperately looking for someone, and we saw your ad, and we're like, this guy. <laughs> that's, that's how I got one of my first jobs with interior designers. Uh, so, <laughs> so that's how it happened. Anyways, going back to that story about about dating someone, or you know, if you're looking for that, uh, what this what this guy told me, essentially, a mentor of mine, he said, look, find out what she likes to do, right? Find out. It's so easy now on Facebook, right? You find out. You find out what she likes to do, and and uh, you really find out. You go at it, not like stalking, right? But you find out, right? You find out what what, what is she into, right? What does she talk about? What are what is what are kind of books she likes to read? Find out what she likes to do, and then little by little, like send something, you know, like oh I saw this. I know you like you know this. You might like this, you know. I don't know. If she's into a certain, if she's into Star Wars, right? Let's say you send a little something or you mention Star Wars. You get the attention, but you're not asking for anything. You just get the attention, right? And then you, you, uh, you, you take it a little further, right? Next time, uh, you, let's say the new Star Wars movie is going to come out, but you're not going to ask for it, you know, to go to the movie because, you know, she's got plenty of people to go to the movie. So maybe you do something like, 
like uh, I don't know, like a little drawing of Yoda or something. You know, I don't know, something like that. Anyways, you get the point. <laughs> I hope you do. When you're approaching a gallery, uh, I, I made it all super nerdy, like Star Wars. <laughs> right. When you're approaching a gallery, he told me, uh, I'm not making this one a little long, this little talk, but it's worth it's worth the it's worth the spins. He said, find out what the gallery owner is into, and I'm not talking about business wise, what he is into. You know, it's so easy to do nowadays. It's like, it's like, and then go in there. You know, into that relationship or into that friendship. That way, not as an artist who's looking to get. You know, don't even mention that. Find out, become friends, maybe take him out to a drink, maybe talk about something else, right? Get his attention in another way. Because if you get his attention, like everyone's trying to get his attention or her attention, he's gonna, he's gonna blow you up. Okay, so just a little nugget right there, guys. I know it sounds so simple. It sounds so simple that most of you are gonna be like, that can't work. Okay, well, I guess it can't. More for me. Next time I'm in your city, I'll take the Arctic City, not you. <laughs> that sounded like a evil laugh. <laughs> it really comes down to that. It's just so difficult to, to understand that because most of us, most of us are, are taught to 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 uh, to tackle. It is like a, 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 a another uh, a mentor told me also one time. Uh, I, I I learn from different people, okay? So they don't all, they, as a matter of fact, almost none of them sell artwork. Some of them do, but not, almost none of them. The ones I learn from. Because usually people that are selling, that are like trying to sell artwork, they're either real artists, like, and I mean real artists in the sense that they're working artists, or they're like trying to sell you some marketing stuff, and they're not, you know, working on artwork. They're just kind of, they just kind of talk to artists, you know. Uh, it's, it would be really cool if someone's selling you marketing stuff or something and they're actually also creating artwork and selling their artwork. That would be, that would be really cool. I may be working on some stuff like that very soon. But, um, but anyways, that's for, another, that's for another video. So we're taught to think that, oh yeah, if I just you know, show up and, and talk about that, no, you're going you're gonna to get butchered. You're going to get butchered if you do that, you know? So this uh, mentor told me, right, this other mentor said, you know, uh, and, and this is something that a lot of people know, I think, out there, especially in, in, uh, in business, in the business community. They sell, if you, if, if, if you want to sell uh, cows, right, give the milk away, right? If you're in the business of selling cows, give the milk away. If you're in the business of... Like Gillette, I don't know if you ever know about Gillette, the shaving. You know, if you're into uh, into into, I don't know, selling razors, give the blades away. If you're into selling, uh, and I don't mean this necessarily just literal. You know, I'm, I'm talking about. I hope someone, one of you or two of you, can can grasp what I'm trying what I'm trying to say here. Um, if you're selling shaving cream, right, give the razors away. Make the conversation other than what you're doing, is what I'm trying to say. And most of us are not taught to do that. Most of us are taught to tackle it about that. You know, that's, that's why you see restaurants, successful restaurants, are not selling food. Successful restaurants don't sell food. We all think they do. You know, some, some here and there. But successful restaurants don't sell that. And, and I'm not talking about some, some simple, like, oh, well, they still service. Yeah, they're, they have, duh, right? They're, they're, they're in the business of selling service, right? Hospitality or whatever you want to call it, um, whatever it's called. Restaurants are in the business of creating uh, events. Ah, right? You've seen that? Some of the most successful restaurants have events. They always, they always have something going on. They either have like a, they host some sort of party, they host some sort of event. They're usually having events that have nothing to do with their, or very little to do with their food. 
Why? They're not trying to be tricky. You know, they're not being tricky. They understand that. The successful, the successful restaurants understand that. You know, they, they know that. That. And I will be making an extensive uh, video about this. Uh, the stuff that I've learned about that specifically. But, you know, I once, I once heard a restaurateur say, you know, if you want to uh, talk about, you know, the, the business of being in a restaurant. And this doesn't apply to every single one of them. I'm just, I'm, I'm just giving you guys a general you know, idea. But he said, uh, if, if, if you want to sell, if you want to sell drinks, you know, be in the business of food. Right? If you want to sell drinks, like, uh, I don't know, like alcohol drinks, whatever. Be in the business of food, don't be in the business of drinks. And that for me was a very eye opener, and, and it's not it's not that black and white, okay? So it's not like oh yeah, I'm gonna open a no. It means it means don't make the conversation about the drink. Make sure that the drink comes later. It's not really the conversation. Doesn't mean you're trying to hide it. It means you don't open with that because everybody's trying to do that. Hope I made any sense for any uh, uh, some of you. I, I know a lot of people know about this stuff, but try to apply it in your artwork too. It might help you. I don't know. I don't know. I can't promise anything because I don't know your drive. It really comes down to that. It doesn't come down to how well you paint or, or any of that other stuff. It comes down to it comes down to heart. But when you put the heart in, you know your, your whole intention, you start you start becoming very uh, uh, creative as to how you create the conversation around your artwork and your, and your message. So I'll leave you with that, guys. The name here is Jose Trujillo. I am the world's greatest living artist. Just because I am. I don't know, guys. I am. What can I say? <laughs> All right. There we go. Check that out. Bam. Isn't that nice? I'm telling you guys. Keep it cool, all right? Look at this messy palette. Ah, super messy. I like it messy. Okay, take care, guys. Till next time. Bye-bye.